Hi everybody, this is Sharice Matthews and welcome. Today I am so excited to talk about the brain and wellness of the brain. And uh, you know, there, we have a special guest that's going to be joining us today. And uh, he's coming on the line in just a minute. As soon as we see him on, I'll add him to this live. But truly, what I want to share with you is that there is new technology called NERF2. And NERF2 technology really, really helps with the brain. And so as soon as our friend, here he is right here, and let me just add him. I'm going to add him here and add. There he is. He's in, I'm inviting Dr. Arthur Lupshot, and he's coming on in just a second here. There you are. Hi, Arthur. How are you? Hey, Cherise. How are you? Good. Welcome. Well, thank you so much for having me here. Okay, so I want to first introduce you, Arthur. This is my dear friend, Arthur Lepsha. He's a doctor in physical therapy, and he specializes in um, stroke and brain injury. And he is so much fun. I'll tell you what. He's a scientist that's fun, and he's an athlete, and he can cook. <laughs> I know, and, and really, really a great friend of mine, and he really deals with this. And Arthur, what I would love for you to do is talk a little bit about what you do as a physical therapist and what you see all the time. Welcome. All right. Well, well thank you so much again, Sharice. I appreciate you having me on today. Um, so as you said, I'm a physical therapist. I've been a physical therapist for almost 24 years. I spent almost 18 of that in private practice, exclusively working with stroke and traumatic brain injury and the long, long road of recovery that occurs after a stroke and traumatic brain injury. Um, my wife and I not only have a private practice where we see patients, but we also teach the treatment approach we use nationally and internationally. And we've been teaching around the world for, oh gosh, uh, f almost 14 years, 13, 14 years now. So, um, that, that, that's really been our joy and our passion, but I, I got to tell you, uh, recovering from stroke and brain injury is probably one of the hardest things I ever see a human being go through. And truly, what we've discovered today is if we can help people prevent from ever getting to that point, if we can prevent some of the things that lead to stroke and other acquired brain injuries, obviously, I'm not talking about the traumatic type. But um, it's so much more powerful, and so, so we're going to help so many more people that way. So that's really become our passion today. Great, Arthur. And now I know that there's some new technology called NRF2. And first of all, if you would, please explain what that is, and then explain how you've actually seen it help in brain Yeah. Models. So, so NRF2, I'm not going to give you the big, long name that goes behind it, but NRF2 is a protein that we have in our bodies. The NRF2 protein, there's many NRFs. There's NRF1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, et cetera, et cetera. But the NRF2 protein in particular is a master regulator of antioxidant and detoxification in our bodies. And it's the master regulator of our genetic expression. So how this relates in particular to brain health and brain wellness is that so many of the disease processes out there are directly related to either that oxidative load, that oxidative stress on the brain, or even mitochondrial dysfunction in the brain. So whether we're talking about, you know, um, dementia, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, we're seeing a huge correlation between that oxidative stress and, and these disease processes. And if we can decrease that load of oxidative stress, we can have a profound impact on reducing the risk of these diseases. So, you know, really what, what Kelly and I discovered in, in coming across this is that it is possible to turn this protein on. And, and, and the reason why we even have to do that, let me, let me sort of back up in biology a little bit, is we're all born with this NRF2 protein. And if it's doing its job properly, if it's working the way it's supposed to, it will turn on and turn off the expression of over 200 different genes in our genetic code. And one group of genes in particular, called our survival genes, is responsible for upregulating or downregulating the production of three critical enzymes in our bodies that naturally reduce that oxidative stress. 
those enzymes, just so you know, are, are called superoxide dismutase, catalase, and glutathione. And glutathione in particular is tremendously important. Well, somewhere in our mid to, you know, 20s, 24 to 26, that NRF2 protein starts getting bound down to another protein and it stops doing its job properly. Well, through nutrigenomics, we can break the link between the NERF2 protein and the KEEP1 pathway and get that NERF2 protein to go back into the nucleus to rebind to the proper receptor sites on our genetic code and turn those your own body's enzymes back on to decrease that oxidative load. This is huge. It's a natural way of just getting your body back in balance. So Arthur, what you're saying is around 24 years old, is that the best we're ever gonna be? But now- I'm we're... afraid that most of us peaked somewhere around our mid twenties. It's, it's sad oh. to say, I don't feel like it today, but um, it, it is true, most of us peak somewhere around our mid twenties. So if we can activate this nerve two pathway, what you're talking about, then we can help possibly, you know, reduce that oxidative stress. And in your case, dealing with people with a uh, brain and stroke and, and different injuries in that realm, then possibly what we can do is just help those patients and many other, it sounds like as well. Yeah, and, and what we know is that when there is a, a trauma like a stroke or a brain injury, there is cellular death. With that cellular death, there are biochemical changes uh, that actually increase that oxidative load in the brain. So anything I can do to help decrease that oxidative load just stacks the odds to let the brain function better, to let it do what it's supposed to do. Right. And are we also talking about inflammation here too, Arthur? Oh, tremendously. I mean, we know that these same survival genes have tremendous anti-inflammatory benefits. So to, to bring down that swelling that's occurred with that cellular death and those biochemical changes and that oxidative stress, it's all highly, highly interconnected. Absolutely. So we know that just because we work together and we've been friends for many years, that we do have a little yellow pill that can actually reduce that oxidative stress. Is, is that correct? And would you just talk very, very shortly on that? Well, I will tell you, when I got introduced to an ABC primetime special report that first looked at, at this little yellow pill, I was kind of blown away because I was a huge skeptic. And when I looked at the peer-reviewed published studies that's out there, you know, that really changed my mind to understand what this science truly was. I, I was completely naive to it, as so many are. And, and once I became educated about it and realized how much scientific validation was truly there to support what Dr. McCord was saying, that this could decrease oxidative stress an average of 40% in 30 days, I simply looked at my wife and said, I want it. You know, if I can decrease my oxidative stress, and I know that even beyond stroke and traumatic brain injury, that oxidative stress is directly linked to over 200 different disease processes. Just to have the opportunity to decrease that risk of those diseases, to have that extra little insurance umbrella over my body, I was all for, 100%. And I would say anybody, if you have a pulse, if your heart is beating, you're generating oxidative stress at a very high rate, okay? Mm -hmm. And there is if you have kids, you're generating more. <laughs> Even more. <laughs> and we have four. Well, you have three. I have four. Um, and, you know, anything I can do to decrease that load on my body and help my body function optimally. Look, we're getting hijacked every single day. Our bodies are being hijacked by our environments, by the foods we eat, by, by the exercising we love to do. It's all increasing that oxidative load. And if I can get back in and biohack my genes through nutrigenomics, through good, proper nutritional support, and get my body back in balance and have it work the way it's supposed to, that is huge. Absolutely huge. Okay, so do you, Arthur, give this to your patients as well? So as a physical therapist, I don't prescribe anything. However, I educate all of my patients to the benefits of what I found how I feel this can affect their functioning in their body, not only for what they're recovering from in, in our individual case, but actually for overall wellness and prevention of future problems as well. I, I truly believe it's just about stacking the odds in your favor. Mm -hmm. Well, you certainly have done that, Arthur. Thank you so much for that. Do any last thoughts before we end this live? 
Well, you know, Sharice, yeah, one other thing really does um, jump to mind in that, you know, yes, we have this beautiful support for the NRF2 protein, but, but truly there's one other thing that has to be taken into consideration and discussed, and that's the NRF1 protein. And that protein is responsible for restoring dysfunctional mitochondria and helping your body build bigger and stronger mitochondria. The mitochondria are a little organelle in our cells that produce 90% of our body's energy. And I had no idea how, how superfluous our, our numbers of mitochondria in our body truly are. I mean, every cell in our body has thousands, and in some cases, tens of thousands of mitochondria. In particular, organs like the brain and the heart have tremendous levels of mitochondria. And what I didn't realize was that, you know, our bodies regenerate themselves on a regular basis. Cells replace themselves on a, on a regular basis, and different organ systems do that at a different rate. And actually, about every seven years, your entire body has replaced itself. Well, with mitochondria, as they replace themselves, they basically do it by taking a copy of the old cell. Well, if that old cell is fuzzy, and you take a photocopy of a fuzzy cell, what do you get, Sharice? You get a fuzzy cell. A fuzzy, a fuzzy cell. And usually that fuzzy copy is not quite as clear as the original. Well, the clearer you can have that original, the better you can have that original mitochondria before it makes its copy, the better the copy is going to be. And maintaining that mitochondrial health is so important. We're now beginning to believe, and, and scientists and researchers I've heard speculating, that the underlying causes of some cancers might actually be the replication error of dysfunctional mitochondria. That means bad copies of bad copies build up and actually start building cancerous cells. So I so, think anything we can do, yeah, you got to keep those, those little suckers healthy. Well, you're, you're talking ninth grade biology now, and I've got some high schoolers, and really, <laughs> you're saying that those mitochondria are the powerhouse to the cell. They create energy. So if we don't have energy, could it be that our mitochondria are just not firing the way they should be? I'm hearing physicians say that's one of the number one things they're having people come in and complaining with is that general malaise, that fatigue feeling, and so often that is due to a, a root of, of dysfunctional mitochondria and just not having those cells working the way they're supposed to. So you're saying that we can actually turn on our NERF1 pathway to help our mitochondria and our NERF2 pathway to reduce and, oh, well, first upregulate our survival genes. Yep. Who's in? I mean, that's crazy. I'll be in <laughs> twice. Yeah. <laughs> well, Arthur, I just want to thank you so much for your time. I just adore you as a friend. You and your wife, Kelly, and your four kids, and your dog, Primrose, which I think I heard barking in the background. Yeah, she's prancing around the yard here somewhere. <laughs> Uh, she's, she's gorgeous, and I've got my little honey bunny sitting right here, too. I thought she was going to chime in, but didn't, didn't get the chance to. So I want to thank you for your time. I just you, value please. you so much and your expertise in this field, and I want to thank you for your time, Arthur. Take care, everyone. Well, have a blessed day, Sharice. Thanks, everyone. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.